In this eighth video of the series, uh, uh, we are going to insert some form punches into the strip assembly. So I'll start up, create, edit a strip layout, and select add a form punch. And I will select the faces that will be used to create that form punch. And I'll give it a name, select a material type, and enter a heat treatment. I will use the 3D punch, and I'll select this icon to sketch in that punch. Looking down from the top, you can see how it puts me normal to and zooms me in on that station. And I am just going to use these, convert the perimeter of these faces, and then simply delete the entities that I don't want. these entities and I'll trim away yes. and I'll trim this away And just to simplify miss this need to trim that. I have a closed contour now. And just to simplify this, I and I don't have external references, I'm just going to take and delete these references. take and fix these in place. Exit out of the sketch. And you can see here is saying that the uh, faces are too complex to create this punch. So I will just click OK and I'm gonna validate this punch anyways. I'll exit out of the strip layout open up this punch and we will have to do some manual manipulation and it does create the you can see it extruded the punch and we do have a surface here actually surfaces I'm gonna highlight those and show them and I will temporarily hide the extruded solid and first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in this opening. So I'll click on, and this is a SolidWorks surfacing tool. If you, you can uh, delete an opening in a surface, if you click on the edge of it and just hit the delete key, very quickly delete that opening. And now I'm going to use a logo press tool and let me just first select these surfaces and use logo press faces merging. And you can see it created 
a dumb imported solid and it merged it into all these face all these uh, surfaces into a single surface so now I can delete these two um, features don't need them anymore so I have a clean surface to create the punch with and now I'll show the boss select the surface and do a surface SolidWorks cut with surface and the arrows point in the right direction click OK and the end of the punch is cut off now I can hide that surface don't need to see that anymore and let's say I want to extend some of these faces so it's beyond the uh, the part so then I would just use some SolidWorks direct editing tools say move face and I'll move this face out say 40 thousands and then I'll create another move face this time I'll just move 10 thousands move that one that one do the same thing on this side Kind of hard to see in the preview, but these all these faces are offset out of ten thousands. And one more move face because I want to also offset these faces. go and the nice thing about using move face is you're not dealing with surfacing it is just uh, direct editing on a solid and I'll save that and close this and you see how that is on the part there and if I want to I can put a uh, pedestal or a foot on this using logo press function and I want to select uh, oh pedestal and I'll choose a template select the side face of course I don't want it offset that much so I'll just say let's offset it out 10,000 is reduce that chamfer size and the radius on the bottom a little bit smaller and then also the height make that taller say that's what I want click OK and now I got a pedestal on that punch form punch is completed and uh, let's say I want to create a form punch for this up form right here. And I don't have to go back and create uh, a strip layout if I don't want to. I can actually create the form punch just with this icon. Formed area on the strip. That this time is just going to be the radius. From the bottom of the strip, and I can give that a name. Material heat treatment, you can see, is just defaulting what I had last entered. And this time, I'm going to use a 2D punch where it's going to coin or set that radius, thin it. And then I select punch body sketch definition, click on the station I want to create that punch. You can see it zooms me in, it makes me normal too. And I'm just going to sketch in a rectangle, something like this. Of course, I would uh, dimension this fully, but for demonstrating this punch, this is good enough. And 
saying we get a preview of the punch and let's say I want to change something with something of this geometry right here well I can change stuff like oh if I didn't want this to angle off 15 degrees I can change that right here so I want that to be zero apply that and say I'd this radius down here right and this is defaulting uh, to values set in the local press options and set this is set to three times material thickness so this R if I wanted to round that up to say 50 thousandths I could do that and I could also reduce the amount that it's coining that and the radius up here say I only want uh, a thousandth and I just hit apply and there it just updated click OK and that form that form die is done form punch and next I'm gonna create a marking punch or a stamp for the coining of these grippers Again, I'll go over into form punch form die insert. Formed area on the strip, that's just gonna be this top face. And I'll change this to a marking punch. And then I'll sketch it in. Select here. Again, it zooms me in normal. And I'm just gonna create a center line. Actually, I'll create it from here to here. And then I'll create a center rectangle. Something like that. Of course, I can always drag it a little bit bigger if I wanted to. And normally I would fully define that, but again, for time's sake, and you can see it cut the end of the punch off. Click OK. I'll open up this punch. And that's what that looks like. And if I wanted this to be a little bit taller, I can always use uh, meaning right now this is flush with the top of the strip. I can use the SOLIDWORKS Direct Editing Tools, move face again, and say I want to offset this down, say 15 thousandths in the other direction. And now these are taller. Save and exit. So now you can see this is not flush with the top of the strip. Of course, I could I could adjust that by editing that feature again, that move face feature. And next, I will um, let's say I want to create a shoulder on this cutting punch. Show over here a pedestal. Before we put a pedestal on the form punch, well, this time we're going to create a shoulder. And uh, we'll use the style right here, or the template right here, shoulder with a T. Select my reference face. Get a preview, and we can you can see all the different values, all of these different values down here that we can change. I'll just say um, change the height of, the, of that. There's our shoulder, T-shaped T-shaped shoulder on that cutting punch. Next, I will go into create edit strip layout. Uh, we do have something that is left to be applied. It's probably because I've modified that cutting punch, so I'll apply that. And this time, I will click OK. And I am going to populate the information note and also I am going to create a joined part. Select yes. Okay. 
because right now you can see this looks like an assembly in the individual parts. And when it finishes, now you can see it's joined together. It looks like a realistic strip. And here you can see the information note, all the different information, forces and perimeter around uh, around uh, your perimeter around cutting punches. So that would be for like calculating wire time, perimeter around form punches, material lost. There's even uh, weights and, and all this information for quoting. I'm looking at the strip though, and you can see all of these little areas right here. When I added the radius in a previous video onto the blank, it was done in the flat blank station, but not in the station where we're putting this coined area in. And also now we're putting in the grippers in and so forth down the line. Well, that's easy enough to change. First, I'm going to go to the configuration tab and change a display state back so it looks like a, an assembly. And then to make the change, I have to go back to that original reference part, the one with the station marks again. And you can see this fillet that I added uh, to fillet these corners. Well, the part is still flat here. Still flat there. If I go up another one, yep. So 10 still still flat, but if I go up one more, look at that. It's all formed and it, it moved up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this fillet just above the 0, 010 station mark, or the 110 station mark. So now even for this station, we still we got the fillets on the corners here on the flat. Go down to the bottom, go back to strip. Actually, I'll save that right away. Go back to strip. And to have that update into the strip, I have to select update the stations. Reimport all the bodies. Now if I zoom in on here, you can see there's no spaces in the corners, no blank spots. So to get the information note and the join part to update, I just have to go into create edit strip layout and click OK again. Got all my information checked, say yes. at this from the top again. You can see all the little spaces are now filled in and our information note updated. And when it calculates this information note, and you can see it also calculates forces for individual cutting punches and forming punches. And it also um, creates in, uh, cutting forces for individual stations and it just created look in here it just created material types or file types it created this trip summary information note it's a spreadsheet you can see all that information is in a spreadsheet too that you can share with whoever you need to So our strip is complete, and that's the end of this uh, of this eighth video.